welcome back. We are going to be making a giant air zooka cannon or a giant vortex cannon. This is going to be really cool. We're going to be making it out of a garbage bin. I've made these in the past, both in small sizes and large sizes, but I didn't film it last time. This time I'm going to be using this in one of my classes, so I might as well show you guys how to make it at home. First off, you're going to need a garbage can. We're going to cut it open, specifically on the bottom. You want to cut out the center circle. Play around with di the dimensions, start with a smaller circle, see how that works, and then move your way outwards. I'm going to go with what I know works, which is about taking the inner two thirds of the trash can out. So let's open it up. Now, as you can see, there's a hole straight through this trash can. This ring is the most important piece of the giant air vortex cannon. As long as you have a circular ring at the bottom of your trash can and you force air through it, somehow that will create that effect of throwing that air a long distance. Let's create the back end. We need to cover the mouth of the trash can. Now I'm going to be using six millimeter poly, but you can use a tarp or anything else that is uh, able to catch the air. So. If you want, you could just drape it over and tape it just like that, but I'm going to actually cut a nice circle. So we have this cut now. So if you flip this over, this is a film that if we were to tape this down right now, we could tap this end like a drum and that would force air out of that smaller hole on the bottom. That would create really nice smoke rings, but we want more of a, a dramatic effect. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to indent this and make it stretch. How are we going to do that? Bungee cords, yes. You're going to want two that are about the same and I will find a few here. What you're looking for in the bungee cord is to be able to stretch across the large end of the trash can and have it pretty tight. So if you want to make it permanent, you can actually drill holes in the trash can and make it a little bit permanent. But since I might be taking this apart and using the bungee cords for something else, I'll just stretch them across and hook them onto the lip of the trash can itself. The next thing is the handle. So I'm going to be using a water bottle, but you could use a pop bottle or even a piece of rope if you want. Essentially, I just need something that I can put on the inside of here that when I pull it back, it will stretch the bungee cords. And when I let go, it'll snap back into place. So let's see how this works. When I pull back on this little loop here, it's going to pull up on the bungees and then allow it to snap back. The next step is going to be taping down the edges so that no air can get out except for through that big hole on the bottom of the trash can. Just make sure that you leave enough space to pull it back so it's fully extended. I have created an entire film that is sealed. So the only way that air can get in or out of this trash can is through this hole that I cut on the bottom. And when this gets pulled back and pushed forward, it is pulling and pushing air out of this hole. So now let's put on the elastic bands and see how it works. Now that we've actually finished making the giant vortex cannon, let's set up some streamers and test out exactly how far away we can throw the air. 
These streamers are set up 20 feet away from my cannon. Take a look at how slow the air is moving. This is moving at a brisk walking speed. It's very cool how it holds its shape and still travels through the air. So basically that's how you make a really large vortex cannon. We added in a few extra uh, bungee cords because the more spring it has, the more pronounced the effect is going to be. Now if you have a smoke machine or a fog machine, you can fill the garbage can up with fog and see the rings being shot out. If it's too ambitious to make a huge one, you can always make a small one. And when I do classes in person, this is what we use. You just get a plastic cup, you make a hole in the bottom and it can be just small, or large, and what you end up doing is you create essentially the same thing, but you put a balloon on one end, so that is in place of the tarp and the bungees, and then you just wrap it around the large end of the cup, and by pulling the back end of the balloon, you force air through this smaller hole right in the end of the cup. Maybe this one will be easier to see. You can put handles on it or decorate it, and when you pull this back, it actually does throw it a very long ways if you can aim it, but it's hard to aim. So let's see if I can hit those. It'll actually throw it up to, I believe, 35 feet is the farthest that I've been able to aim with it, but I know it goes farther than that. I just don't know where the air is moving. Now I'm going to set up the light so that you can see exactly how this works because I can fill the cup with smoke and then show you the cool rings that it creates. Let me walk you through how this works. You take a balloon, you cut the large end off with a pair of scissors. Make sure you get help with this if you are small. Tie a knot in the end without blowing it up. Just like a normal balloon knot. So then you have a balloon with the end cut out. Take your cup and wrap it over the end, just like that. And this is all you need to make it yourself. I put a piece of tape around the edge of the balloon so that when you pull back the knot, it doesn't pull the balloon off of the cup. So that's it. I'm going to show you the smoke rings that these are creating. You can see exactly the rings as they come out and float in the air because of Bernoulli's principle. Now Bernoulli's principle states that the faster that a fluid, or in this case air, is traveling, the lower its pressure. And because we're forcing a large amount of air through a small opening, it creates a low pressure ring that keeps its shape as it travels through the air. That is so cool. Until it hits something, it will just continuously travel just like that. That is so cool. <laughs> so there you have it. If you want to make a vortex cannon yourself, you can go out and make one. A cheap one using just a plastic cup, or you can actually hack up a giant trash can and make one for yourself, because it's really fun and it's amazing how far the air actually travels. See you next time, I'm Jonathan Allers for Destructive Creativity. Bye!